go towards tawaf, when you go towards tawaf, why is it that Allah makes you go around the Kaaba seven times? What is it? Because all we're ever told is make sure that your shoulder is facing and that you're between the maqam. If you step outside the maqam, you might burn in hellfire tomorrow. Make sure you're right within the maqam. Sharia says, wait, 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 wait. Why are you doing that tawaf? What's the reason? Notice that man who came to our sixth imam and said to him, look how great hajj is this year. Look how many people are doing tawaf. Imam said, look through my fingers. When he looked through the fingers, he saw animals performing tawaf, didn't he? Shari'at, he says, do you know what tawaf is? He says, there are four meanings to why you go around seven times. Look at that. Four meanings why you go around seven times. He said, the first meaning, why you go around seven times is to tell you, oh mankind, you are constantly moving, whereas your Lord remains the same. There's a time I'm not religious, but my Lord looked after my religion. There's a time I was arrogant, my Lord was always humble. There's a time I was stingy, my Lord was always generous. Shariati says when you're moving around that Kaaba seven times, you, O oh human, are always moving, but your Lord always is the same. Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi al karim. O mankind, what made you doubt that generous Lord of yours? When you're moving, it's a metaphor for life that you are moving all the time, up and down, religious and not religious. Your Lord remains fixed. Number one. Number two. He says, look at what they tell you to do. It's a metaphor for life. You have to be constant with your shoulder. And you have to be disciplined with your akhlaq. And number three, you have to always be moving. He said, that is the very meaning of the human being. They have to be constant in their principles. Disciplined in their ethics. Moving spiritually towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, he says, when you go around tawaf seven times, they tell you there's an area you can't enter. What's it called? Hajar Ismail. That semicircle around the Kaaba, you can't go in there, can you? He said, do you know why Allah made you remember that semicircle seven times? He said, think about who's buried there. A lady, number one. A black lady, number two. A slave black lady number three it's as if allah was taking you in a circle to tell you mankind the worst disease that can ever affect you is racism and is you being a person who is arrogant towards those who are less well off than you and you being arrogant towards the opposite gender therefore purposely i have made you remember a lady who is not only a lady, but she was a slave girl, and she was of a colored complexion, yet I will make every believer of mine encircle her grave all their life. Notice that we are going round, but in a way we're demolishing racism as we go round. We are saying that that lady is the mother of a prophet and the wife of a prophet. Yet that lady was a slave originally, and she wasn't of our complexion. Yet Allah wanted us to break and destroy that seven times as we move around. But number four, he says something unbelievable. He says, do you know why Allah made you go around seven times? The fourth reason, you are moving from the being of I to the being of we. <clears throat> when you came to Hajj, you kept on saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. When you got cramped in tawaf, you now knew that you were part of a we. Because when the human thinks individualistically about this religion, thinks of I, the religion never moves forward. But when you think of the religion as a we, this religion will always move forward. He says, when you're in that tawaf, Allah wants you to experience being a we, not being an I. Because for too long Muslims say I, and not enough Muslims say we. Therefore, he says, when you finish the tawaf, you've got to go to Safa and Marwa. He says something extraordinary about Safa and Marwa. He says, in tawaf, you're thinking God, God, God. Because you say, labbaik Allahumma, labbaik. But in Safa and Marwa, do you need to say anything? You don't need to say anything in Safa and Marwa. 
He says that now you're moving from God, God, God to you, you, you. He says it's as if Allah wanted you to have that balance in your life. A time for God and a time for yourself. He said Allah didn't want you to go and live in a mountain away from the world as a recluse and say God, God, God from the mountain. Nor did he want you to be in the middle of society without thinking of God whatsoever. Allah wanted you to have a balance. He said, but why from Safa to Marwa? He said, all they tell you is go Safa, Marwa, Safa, Marwa, seven times. He said, do you know what Safa and Marwa is? Safa is your satanic, the satanic vices you have in your life, the satanic values. Marwa is when you get to the godly values. You began at Safa with the most satanic values in you. Arrogance and hypocrisy and greed and lust. When you get to Marwa, you want to replace them with generosity, patience, humility. He says that's number one. Number two, Safa is you being in a state of fear of Allah. Marwa is you being in a state of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Too many of us live lives in a state of fear of Allah. He said, when you're at Safa, you're in a state of fear. When you get to Marwa, you should be in a stage of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, number three, when you walk between Safa and Marwa, stand in the middle and look at Safa and Marwa as if they are the two scales of your deeds on the day of judgment. Sit there, right in the middle of Safa and Marwa, just stand there. Look at Safa, look at Marwa. When you look at the both of them, what should you say? You should look at the both of them and you should look at your day of judgment. Start thinking that if the scales are the scales more good than bad or bad than good. He said only then you'd appreciate what Safa and Marwa really is. He then says when you now have to leave the Kaaba, you have to leave Safa and Marwa. He says when you leave, you get closer to Allah. He said, isn't that a paradox? You leave someone's house, but you get closer to him because now you've discovered yourself and whoever discovers themselves has discovered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.